Good morning. Good morning. You guys watched the Super Bowl yesterday? What'd you think of the halftime show? guys how was everybody's weekend my 
guys, I'm just gonna get started. Sure, you can unmute yourself. Well, did you see my work? My 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 artwork. Sorry, I can't hear you. What did you say? You see my artwork? Yes, they're so good. What a wild. You guys did a really good job. Yes, sir. So we're gonna actually um take those portraits that you guys did and use them in a collage. So I'm gonna show you how to do a few, a couple new Photoshop tools, and then you guys are gonna create a collage using the portraits that you made. Well, you guys, I just wanna let you know if you do wanna share why you're feeling this way, or if anything's going on, you'd like to share with the class, just feel free, know that you can share in the class. You can unmute yourself or talk in the chat. All right, so our objectives today are um, the following. Does anyone want to read them for us? Any volunteers? Let's see here. Akeem, could you read them for us? All right. Thank you. What, what am I reading? Just the students' will, two objectives. Uh, the students will develop a, de a digital college combining Black history with digital portraits. Students will learn paint bucket to tool solid colors, gradients, and patterns, marquee, and eraser tool on Photoshop. That's it, oh, the yellow part too. That's great, thank you so much. So um, what we're gonna, gonna continue building upon is the theme that we did last week for our project. So what does black history mean to me? And then um, also reflect on thinking about ways that artists and designers use Photoshop and how you can apply these skills in real life situations beyond this class too. Like if you were designing a flyer, if you were designing a website, things like that. So I had a lot of really cool um, artworks you guys made this past week. And um, I just threw up a couple examples right now. I'm still making my way through your classes and grading them. Um, 
these are from my studio art class, but I just wanted to show you guys a few examples. But really good job overall. Okay, so this is just an example of how I made a collage based on the portraits that I made last week. So I'll show you guys some examples and how to kind of put these together and make something like this. Um, so for our next project, we will be creating collages that reflect black history and excellence. Take your three photographs and other imagery and combine them in a digital collage. So you guys can really do whatever you'd like to for this theme um, and reflect on the question again, what does black history mean to me? And, you know, I know like a lot of people say like black history isn't just February, it's every month. Black history is American history. So think about ways that you can kind of include that in your work. Anything that's valuable or meaningful to you is amazing. So think about ways to include that in your collage. And beyond using just the portraits that you did, you can think about other imagery that you'd like to include and include more pictures. Um, so you want to use at least one of your artistic digital portraits from last week. You can include other things too, like newspaper clippings, symbols. So like some examples of symbols is like a peace sign for like peace uh, or dove. An eagle represents the country or like freedom, a fist for power. Um, you can use shapes, colors, patterns. You can use landmarks or buildings, places. And then in mine, I also use, I use a poem part of a poem. And um, you can also use different logos or designs of cultural organizations. So you could really just kind of clip and put things together however you want. And it can also be fully abstract, like the one that I did. This one is the only thing that I added in here was the White House. And then I put in like a, a shape. I don't remember what this was, the circular. I think this is just a light effect. So you can kind of do any type of experimentation you choose and how should you combine the images? So like I said, you can kind of do abstract like what I did. These are some other examples that are kind of cool. You can put other images together like the one in the bottom corner inside another silhouette. So you can kind of take one big picture and then fill it with smaller pictures. Um, and you can cut out parts of images and layer and arrange them. You can tile images together. You can also develop a collage or graphic, like see how they're all in ovals here and create a title that develops a theme. Um, you can also just use colors and pictures. It's totally like up to you what you'd like to do. So um, I'm giving you guys a lot of freedom to just kind of experiment with the different tools and what I'm looking to see in the work is just that you've experimented and tried different things in Photoshop. Okay, so how do I access the paint bucket and gradient tool? So for this, I wanted to ask you guys, is there any student volunteer that could share their screen and kind of walk us through using some of these tools? Jaquan, you wanna do it again? Or does anybody, would anybody else like to? Okay, awesome. Jaquan's going to share his screen again. Jaquan's holding it down. Okay, let me just make sure you can share your screen. How do I do that again? Jake Juan, are you able to share? Let me go here. One sec, you guys, Corey, how do I invite somebody to share their screen? Um, 
Like they have the option at the bottom. Like don't they see share screen? Jaquan, do you see the ability to share yes, your screen? Yes, I'm sharing your screen. Oh, I do? Okay. Okay, stop share and then multiple part. Okay, got it. Okay, Jaquan, you can share now. All right, can everybody see Jaquan's screen? Yep. Okay, awesome. So what you're going to do is go to, so open up Photoshop and make a new document for us. Okay, perfect. So um, Jaquan, on the toolbar on the left side, I want you to find the paint bucket. Okay, and just hover your mouse over there. So you guys, this is the paint bucket tool. There's a shortcut to access the paint bucket tool and all you do is press the letter G. So you can select the paint bucket tool and he already has one layer. So what we can do here is on the, um, on the far right side of your screen, at the top, the inside of this options panel, the panel on the right side, it says at the top color, swatches, gradients, and patterns. So why don't you click on color and let's try color first. So pick whatever color you'd like here. And then what you can do is paint, drop it in and paint in the first layer there. If you guys have to go to another class, that's fine. You can just watch the rest of the lesson after. Okay, awesome. So we've got this green color. So now make another layer. So the way we make another layer is at the bottom. Um, yep, you could go layer, new layer. We can also click at the, um, go to the bottom far right of your screen. Do you see the little plus sign that's inside of a square? That's gonna create a new layer. That's a little button for it too. Okay, so now what I want you to do is click on gradients. And that's, sorry, that's, um, do you see it the, in the, where color was on the right side of your screen? So we're gonna go to gradients. So there's a whole bunch of different gradients we can try here. So why don't you click on one of them and we'll try it out. Nice, so now we've filled our layer with a gradient. So let's make one more layer. And right now, because we put that gradient on top of the green, we can't see through it, but I'm gonna show you how to adjust that as well. So layer, and so in this next layer, the blank layer, layer two, click on the layer that's empty and then go to patterns on the top right of your screen. Okay, so there's a few here, trees, grass, water. So why don't you, um, click on the little folder at the bottom of this box. There's a little folder icon. Click on that. Or sorry, wait, no, 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 cancel. Click on the two little lines at the top of the box and click on legacy patterns and more. So there's a whole library of, you can open that legacy patterns now. There's a whole library of different types of patterns and textures. So you can expand those and just pick any of them. So there's patterns, rock pattern, texture. So pick any that look interesting to you. Okay, and then we have to use our paint bucket and fill in the layer. Got it, okay, perfect. Okay, so now what I want you to do is do you see on the layers panel where it says opacity? Go to up a little bit more, see where it says fill and yeah, right there. So right now it says 100%, you guys, if you adjust that and bring it down, it's going to be see-through. Okay, ooh, that looks great. 
And now you can go to that gradient fill. If we want to see some of that green, we can go to the gradient fill layer. See where it says the layer below. You can click on that layer, gradient fill one. And we can drag down the opacity there as well and see what it looks like. Actually, you know what? I would leave it at 100. I like the way it looks without the green, but I'm gonna show you something else you can do. Okay, so next tool that we're going to use is the marquee tool. So the marquee tool shortcut is the letter M. So you can press the letter M or you can go see this. Okay, so see the tool now that was selected, press and hold on that tool. So this allows you to select certain areas within a specific shape. So why don't you pick elliptical marquee tool. And now what you can do is come to, you're selected on the gradient layer, which is great. So click and drag on your canvas to make a, a circular elliptical selection. Okay, now let go when you're ready. Okay, great. So now what I want you to do is press the letter E or you can use the on the left side of your bar, this is the eraser tool, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna erase part of this. Okay, so clicks, you're getting a stop, uh, like a stop icon on your mouse. It's okay, click. So what it's gonna say now is it, it's, it'll say, oh, it needs to be rasterized. That's fine, you can click okay. So what that's basically saying is like, you created this gradient that is a smart object, a digital layer. What we need to do is make it into an image, rasterize it. So now we've made it into a, we've rasterized it. Okay, so now why don't you kind of like drag your eraser over the surface and see what happens. Just kind of go crazy with it. Just start erasing, okay. So now what's happening is he's able to erase, but it stays within that selection. Okay, awesome. So in order to deselect this, if we don't wanna be in this marquee anymore, what you can do is, um, yep, you could go select, deselect, because shortcut is just control D. Okay, cool. So then what the next steps would be is you, you know, you've played around with some of these tools, you've used the different gradients and textures. What I'd encourage you guys to do now is think about ways to build upon and add your images in. Um, you can do the same effects with your actual pictures. So you can insert your pictures and then do a round marquee tool on it and erase the rest of the picture outside of the circle. Okay. So thank you so much, Jaquan. I'm going to share my screen now. and go back to our lesson. So just to kind of go over this again, you guys, and are there, if there's any questions, please just let me know in the chat or unmute yourselves. So now that you've seen that little demonstration, thank you so much for doing that for us. Just to preview the tools again, we went over the eraser tool. We went over the marquee tool Excuse me, Miss Woods. Uh, yes. I gotta. I have to go to English now. That's you guys. Don't worry. If you have to go, it's fine. I record the lesson. You can watch the rest later. All right. Thank you, Miss Woods. Yep. No problem. So then we have the paint bucket tool and gradient tool. So remember, on the right side of your screen in the panel bar, you can adjust and select whatever type of options you need for that. No worries. All right. So. I'm gonna wrap it up soon anyway. Thank you, take care. Okay, you guys, so now I'm just gonna show you the criteria for this and then kind of play around on Photoshop, show you guys some more examples. So number one, we're going to develop a collage, a digital collage to the, as a response to the question, what does black history mean to me? And this is totally open. I want it to be personalized. You can do your own thing. Just experiment with the tools. Um, you should be 
combining at least four different photographs layered on top of a gradient pattern. So what Jaquan demonstrated to us on top of that, I want you to insert at least four different pictures or like elements of pictures. I want you to demonstrate a variety of tools, including um, marquee tools, gradients, uh, textures and patterns, type tool and eraser tool. We can utilize the transparency to overlay elements. So that opacity part that I went over and Jaquan showed us, if we use that on our layers, then we're able to see through. And then you guys are also going to submit the collage. It's, it shouldn't say it's submit three images, sorry. Hold on. Submit collage in JPEG form. Okay, so, so this was the example that I made. I'm gonna do a new one. So when you guys are starting, file new. Um, what you should do when you make your collage is, I like to do in inches just so I can see, it's like a measurement that I recognize. And I'm gonna do a square. I'm gonna do 10 by 10 and create my collage. Okay, so I'm going to click on the gradient tool. And here we can pick, there's so many different styles and colors that you can make. So you can do the fill with the paint bucket or you can actually click on the gradient tool. So in order to use the gradient tool, I just click gradient tool, pick the gradient I want, and then you kind of click and drag to control the direction of the gradient. Okay. And then I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna to go to paint bucket tool. That looks kind of cool. Looks like a, the bottom of a swimming pool. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to add in a picture. So I'm actually just going to the easiest way right now for me to do this is just click and drop in one of my images. So I'm going to use I'll use this one I made as an example, this Kelly Rowland. Okay, so <clears throat> another way to use the marquee that's cool, I'm gonna use the elliptical marquee again, is to be on my layer and I'm going to select the part of the image that I want. And then you just do co copy paste, command C or control C, control V. And what you can see is on the layers panel, it actually just made a new version of it that's in a circle. So I can delete this other layer. And do you guys see how the edge is a little bit buzzed out? The way that I did that was I said feather. So if I want if I want that blurry edge to be a little bit bigger, I can increase the amount of pixels. So let me do 30 pixels and see what it looks like. 30 pixels. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Control C, Control V. And now it's kind of made the feathering even bigger. Uh, yeah, Miss Woods. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, that was scheduled for another day. Uh, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, and I just have a quick question. Yes. Uh, and what if we don't want the edges to be blurry? What if we want it to be uh, like a crisp cutout? Yeah, got it. Okay, so what you do is you go to feather zero, the default will be zero. It'll be zero like this. And then Control C, Control V, and you won't have any feathering. Okay. Yes. Um, and then there's also there's some other tools. 
Okay, we got 10 minutes. Okay, so let's say I leave it like this. Okay, and then what I can do is I can move it around using the move tool. And then if I wanna make it larger or smaller, I can use free transform, um, which we used in another project, which is just selecting the layer. And then you can go to um, edit, transform, free transform. My way of doing it is just command or control T. And then um, you can do all these different things. You can skew the picture. You know, you can resize it. Looks kind of cool. Okay, and these are, it's totally optional if you guys want to add in like more brush, more brushwork too. That looks cool. You just got to make sure that when you're doing this, try to continue to make new layers because the more that you add on to one layer, you can't really reverse it. Okay, so you guys can, let's see here, what do we got? All right, so basically you guys are gonna keep doing this, combine your images together, play around with these tools. Does anybody have any specific questions or, or like with the demo? Um, or want me to show anything again. And just remember when you're doing this, rather than open your picture, you're gonna go file open and make a make a blank, um, sorry, not file open, file new, and actually make a blank document. Okay, don't open the image, we're just gonna actually add in the pictures. and save your work. And that's it. Any other questions, you guys? So just to show you again, the different tools, we have paint bucket, gradient tool. Um, and remember with the gradient tool and paint bucket, in the panels on the right side, you can pick colors, patterns, gradients. You can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, if any of you want an extra challenge, what you can do is use the, try to figure out how to use the lasso tool. And um, I'm actually gonna show the whole class how to use it another project. So I think probably our next project after the break. Um, but if you wanna, show that you're like show initiative and you want to try it on your own you can also do that the lasso tool is right here and there's also quick quick selection which you can like select parts of an image and remove them or add on my desktop yeah it was All right, you guys, if there's no other questions, I can wrap it up and I'll post the lesson so you guys can watch again. I hope you guys have a great day. Does, are we sure nobody has any clarifying questions? We feel good about moving forward. How's everybody feeling about moving forward with this project, this part of the project? You can type in the chat or unmute yourselves. Got it, awesome. And remember to use those those portraits that you made in your collage. It'll add in another layer of um, artistic elements.
Anyone else? All right, you guys, I hope you have a great day. Um, I'll be here. You can message me on Google Hangouts if you have any other questions. No problem. And please thank Jay Kwan again for doing the demo. If anyone else wants to do a demo too, I am totally open to it. I really, really appreciate you doing that. It's nice to have you guys involved with the class in different ways. So thank you, Jay Kwan. All right, everybody have a wonderful day. All right, you too. Take care. Bye.